well, welcome everyone. Just trying to pull up the notes here. Um, so but to welcome everyone to the regular meeting of the Board of Library Trustees of November 9th, 2021. The time is six o'clock and I will invite Jinder to call roll. Trustee Duke Hughes. Trustee Hahn. Here. Trustee Lentini. Here. Trustee Vidot. Here. Chair Cortez. Here. Thank you, Jinder. I'll, um, if you can explain how the public can participate in this evening's agenda. All right, we do have uh, attendees. Good evening, everyone. Viewers are welcome to provide public comment online through Zoom or by telephone at 720-707-2699. And the meeting ID is 850-2692-1637 pound. If you are watching the meeting on Zoom and wish to provide public comment, please select the raise hand feature either on the bottom of your screen or through the participants icon. If you are participating by telephone and wish to provide public comment, please press star nine when the chair opens the public comment period. When it is your turn to speak, you will be notified that the host is inviting you to participate. You will need to press star six to unmute yourself. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. Thank you, Gender. Uh, now we'll move to agenda amendments. Besides what I have to add, are there any amendments to this evening's agenda? We got a typo. Sorry, everyone. In the uh, last section no. of review of library budget for future agenda topics, it should say budget fiscal year 21-22 second quarter. But it says 2021. And we're in 21-22 now. So with that correction, Okay, the other thing I saw was a, and I don't know if this matters, Henry, at all, but it said um, number five, selection of commission chair and vice chair. We're not commissioners, we're board of trustees. So I don't know if that matters, but. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think it's, it's meant to be perceived in a generic, got it. <laughs> but okay. yes. Okay, they just you know the park commissioners, I think different. Um, so one of the agenda items is um, I have to leave at 6.30 and run to get my child vaccinated. Um, so very last minute, I was just um, got a bunch of calls to come down. So um, I apologize um, to everyone for the inconvenience and throwing off any agenda items here. Um, I will leave it up to Henry to figure out how to move someone to take over as chair? Uh, if someone would like to volunteer to be acting chair when Jamie leaves, we only need one. Uh, there's a script everyone has. I could nominate I can, someone. I Ooh. can do it. Adriana, okay, Perfect. cool. So whenever that happens, we'll just make the switch over. Um, and if there's no other uh, amendments for the agenda with, yep. with the correction on the future items and the, the kind of observation about the commission, we're ready for the next thing. The, the, the thing, Henry, is do you need me to be here? Do we need to move any agenda items up that need approval that I should be here? I mean, commission chair, vice oh, chair, five. Very insightful. Uh, as far as co uh, selection of chair and vice chair, that does need a motion in a second. And um, we're gonna review the meeting schedule. So we could go start with selection of chair and vice chair, if that but makes I think sense. That would, that'd be great if we can do those agenda items. Everyone okay with that if I, I see how- So we move that, that up, yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so do we still start with number one minutes? Yeah, my gut okay. tells me. Is Susan shaking her head? Yes, yes, let's do okay. that. All right, great. Oh, I didn't see Susan, my screen is small. Um, okay, so we will move to item number one, approve the regular meeting minutes of October 12th, 2021. Are there any questions from trustees? I don't see any, uh, I will, Ask Jenner to open it for public comment. 
All right, we do have attendees. If you wish to provide public comment and are watching this meeting through Zoom, please use the raise hand function to let us know you would like to speak. If you are participating by telephone and wish to provide public comment, please press star nine. When it is your turn to speak, you will be notified that the host is inviting you to participate. You will need to press star six to unmute yourself. Once you're unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. So I'm just gonna give these folks a few minutes, uh, seconds here to see if they're interested. Let's see. No, I don't see any uh, raised hands. Okay, great. We will close um, public comment. And so do we have a motion to approve the meeting minutes? I'll move to approve the minutes. <clears throat> great, is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Ginger, can you call roll, please? Trustee Ducuse. Aye. Trustee Hahn? Aye. Trustee Lentini? Uh, I think I abstained because I wasn't here. That, or just say yes. Okay. So, um, yes, you can. Okay. okay. Aye. Trustee Vidot? Aye. Chair Cortez? Aye. Thank you, Gender. Um, so we'll move to item number. So we're going to switch then to item number five. Um, I'm seeing Henry looking like that's okay. Okay, so to uh, selection of commission chair and vice chair, Henry. So, so yearly, um, we do this on the calendar year. Um, so this would be starting January of 2022. And so, it's pretty simple. Um, I, don't, I don't have a presentation per se, but, but what we'll be looking for is um, a, someone to nominate someone as vice chair, I mean chair and then vice chair separately, we can't do them together. And so, so we'd be seeking the board to nominate themselves or others on the board for this position with, with the sort of rough understanding that 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 it's like rotating this way so everyone gets a chance to serve and often the way it, it fans out is people who maybe have been on the board but not in the position think of themselves as up for the next time but it, but it doesn't have to be that way did i leave anything out susan No, I, I think uh, what we covered last year was something very similar in that what we try to do is make sure the most senior or the person with the most seniority on the board or commission has the opportunity to be vice chair and, and chair first. And then as people um, serve on the board and get a little bit more experience, they kind of move forward into that, that area of going for the vice chair. So. A lot of you are, are fairly new. Um, I mean, I think, Jamie, how much time have you been on the board now? How many years? I'm, I think I'm just at five right now. Um, right, so I think, I think Adriana is next followed by Cheryl, correct? I mean, you're literally, so everyone other than Jamie is fairly new, so. So I think that we had agreed, if I recall, um, but you know, pandemic time, <laughs> but I think we did agree to that the most, um, senior member, which is why I was there. So it would be Adriana, um, and then Cheryl. And so just saying, if you both feel that you're comfortable with it, then I'm happy to create that nomination, but I just want to ask first. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds fine. Who's, sounds fine currently, vice, who's currently vice chair? I am. Okay. Is that, so, I, I have so many different ones, uh, different boards and commissions. It's it's hard for me to keep them all straight. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, so I would like to nominate Adriana as um, as chair, and Cheryl as vice chair. Do we have a second? I don't know. I'll, I'll second that. Second. Um, actually, actually, you, sorry about that. You just need to make them separate motions. So. Oh. Just in case um, it wasn't approved, then no one can really tell which one was approved and which one wasn't. So if you could nominate 
the individual for chair first and take the role on that and the vote on that. And then we'll do the vice chair. Sorry. Uh, Susan, do we also need to open it up for public comment before we make a vote? I believe so. I think we do. Okay. Gender, can we um, open for public comment first? Yes. If you wish to provide public comment and are watching this meeting through Zoom, please use the raise hand function to let us know you would like to speak. If you are participating by telephone and wish to provide public comment, please press star nine. When it is your turn to speak, you will be notified that the host is inviting you to participate. You will need to press star six to unmute yourself. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. So we do have attendees. I'm just checking to see if anybody's interested. No, I don't see anybody interested. Okay, thank you. We'll close public comment. Uh, so we will start with a motion for chair. Um, so I will make a motion for Adriana to um, be trustee chair. We can have a second. I'll second that. Great, Ginger, can you call roll please? Trustee Ducuse. Aye. Trustee Hahn. Aye. Trustee Lentini. Aye. Trustee Vadot. Aye. Chair Cortez. Aye. Thank you. Approved. Uh, so I will um, make a. I was sorry. I lost my train of thought. I will make a motion to um, ask Cheryl as um, board of trustees vice Cheryl and make that motion. If someone would like to second. I second. Great. Chandra, can you call roll, please? Trustee Ducuse. Aye. Trustee Hahn. Aye. Trustee Lentini. Aye. Trustee Vidot. Aye. Chair Cortez. Aye. Great. Congratulations. Welcome to your new roles. <laughs> Great. Um, and this is why I just jumped out today so that you, you know, you can take it <laughs> Correct. It's really a test. <laughs> um, great. Um, okay, let's move to item number six that we moved up, review of the Board of Trustees meeting schedule. Henry? Uh, yeah, annually we, we try to look at, uh, in addition to the work plan, we look at the schedule of meetings just to, to um, anticipate if there's going to be any conflicts with, with, I didn't see any major holidays but, but I'm gonna bring up that part of the staff report so we can all look at it and just make sure that we, we're, we're all in agreement that these are the dates that we're gonna meet for the next fiscal year, I mean, calendar year. So I'm gonna share my screen. And Henry, I also checked it for any Jewish holidays as well. I know that we try to double check as many holidays as we can. Um, to make sure there's no conflicts and there wasn't any. Can everyone see that? Thank you, Susan. So just a reminder, can everyone see that? Yeah, cool. This is the second Tuesday of the month. And um, it was pretty straightforward. I didn't see any kind of um, like thing reasons why it needed to be put uh, either uh, like the day after or the day before, but this is pretty much a, a, a kind of additional check to make sure that we don't run into scheduling difficulty. So I would ask the board um, and the chair to, to kind of uh, look, look to questions from, from the trustees about this. To unmute myself. Are there any questions from trustees on these dates, Alex? I know <clears throat> the only thing I noticed was for the November date, that's election day. So I don't know if, you know, any folks, obviously it's a big day, long day, if anyone's typically minded to participate in any way in the elections, if that's going to be a conflict for anyone, but that would be the only question I had. That actually is a really good point. That could actually be a big day for us next year with any luck. So well, yeah, I mean, even in Marin, I know we've got a couple of uh, big, big elections on tap for November. So um, 
that would be my only only date that I would maybe question moving or canceling, but leave it up to everybody else. I think that's a great point. Any other, anyone else have any questions? And maybe we could, do, Henry, do we make a motion to change or request to either change the date or cancel it? I think we did it before where we just change it to the week before or the week after is what I recall. Yeah, I'm not sure about, I, I haven't checked, uh, Henry, I don't know if you checked the school calendars. I don't know if April, April 12th um, next year conflicts with their spring break. It happens to proceed Easter next year. So I'm not sure, traditionally they, the school districts seem to have picked that week, but I'm not sure if they always do, so. I can take yeah, a look. Yeah, I'd have to take a look real quick. Here. I usually check these things. Let's see what I've got. Let me see if I can find it really quickly. April. Let's see if I, uh, do I have it? No, I'm showing the fourth through the seventh. So I am not showing that. Nope, it's the week before that they're observing. So we're good there. I, I just checked Miller Creek and they're the last week of March. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. So as far as election day, um, I, I was going to sort of like, I'm assuming the, the polls close at like eight or something, mm -hmm. roughly. So if we're going to look for a different day, um, is there a proposal for a day or, or um, like, like my gut would tell me the following Tuesday, the 15th of November. That would be good. Is that um, who would probably, is that when we're also possibly putting on a proposition? For, yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's sort okay. of the, <laughs> right. so well, like, you know. Yes, got it. Okay, so, so yeah, I mean, I would. Okay, so I'm gonna it. make that change here in this, and so so noted for the record. Um, we're gonna change that. And it'll be recorded in the minutes. Great job, team. Um, do, have we opened this for public comment yet? No. Okay, good. Cool. Yeah. But I just um, wanted to see if anyone else had any. Yeah. Any, any other questions? Dates? No. Okay. Gender, can you open this for public comment, please? Yes. If you wish to provide public comment and are watching this meeting through Zoom, please use the raise hand function to let us know you would like to speak. If you are participating by telephone and wish to provide public comment, please press star nine when it is your turn to speak. You'll be notified that the host is inviting you to participate. You will need to press star six to unmute yourself. Once you're unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. I'm just gonna give these folks a few seconds here to see if they're interested. Yeah, uh, no. Okay, we'll close public comment. Uh, can we have a motion to approve this uh, meeting schedule with the with the additional change in November? I'll move to approve the meeting schedule as amended. Thank you. Can we have a second? I'll go ahead and second. Uh, approve as amended. Thank you. Gender, uh, can you call roll, please? Trustee Ducuse. Aye. Trustee Hahn. Aye. Trustee Lentini. Aye. Trustee Vidot. Aye. Chair Cortez. Aye. Great, thank you, approved. So we will move back up to item number two, um, introductions, awards, recognitions, presentation. So a presentation on the ESL Conversation Club by Supervising Librarian, Jill Tokachomi. Hi, Jill. Hello, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, it's good to see you all again. And um, I don't think I've met Alex. I don't think so, but um, good to see you. Uh, so my name is Jill Tokatomi. I'm a supervising librarian. I supervise um, all of our promotion and programming and also our two smaller branches, Northgate and Pickleweed. And tonight I'm going to share with you about a new um, program that we're offering. 
So let me just pull up my PowerPoint and share my screen. Oh, wait, I think I should share my screen and then pull up my PowerPoint. Okay, and we will present. Okay, so um, I'm going to speak with you about our new ESL conversation club. Um, a little bit of background information. I'm just going to move there so I can actually see this. So. Um, we have a lot of non-native um, non English speakers in San Rafael, um, about 36% of residents according to 2019 data um, speak languages other than, ling than English at home. Um, the, most, uh, the most common non-English language spoken is Spanish, which is um, spoken by about 25% of our residents. And then after that, it breaks down to other Indo-European languages, followed by um, Asian and Pacific Island languages, and then a small, a small subset speak um, other languages that don't fall into any of those categories. So we do have a lot of English language learners in our community. Um, previously, we had a program that served um, ELL, uh, English language learners. Um, so in October 2018 through May 2019, um, there was a collaboration between staff at the Pickleweed Library, um, Canal Alliance, and I think those were the two partners, and they hosted a conversation club called Intercambio at the Marin Health and Wellness Center, and this was specifically for English and Spanish, so um, both English speakers who are interested in learning Spanish and Spanish speakers who are interested in learning English would attend this program. They would get paired up and spend half the time speaking English together and half the time speaking Spanish together. Um, it did initially have a big, um, a big popular uh, attendance where we would get up to 40 participants, but eventually um, around February, it, uh, the interest declined and um, staff decided to no longer offer this program. Um, and since then, we haven't really offered any ongoing programming for English language learners. So um, we will be offering the English Conversation Club. This will be um, led by Lee Ashkenaz, who's a librarian. Um, and with assistance from Perla, who's one of our new library assistants. Um, so it's going to start in December. It'll be twice monthly, every Saturday or every first and third Saturday, um, initially on Zoom. So participants will um, have conversation around a YouTube video or a TED Talk um, or other small piece of media or an article or a short story that is read aloud at the beginning of the program. Um, all conversations will be in English. So it's instead of like intercambio where you're switching, everybody's speaking English and it's open to all non-native speakers, whether their first language is Spanish or Vietnamese, um, everybody's welcome. We are gearing it both in like the content and the conversation level towards um, intermediate conversation level speakers, but anybody at any level is welcome to join and participate in whatever capacity feels comfortable to them, whether that's just listening or participating um, in a way that feels good for them. So um, leading up to this club, because it's starting in December, uh, earlier, I think last week, we sent out some promotion so um, we sent an email cam campaign to all of our English to in English to all patrons to cover basically anybody who might speak a language other than English at home, um, and hopefully they'd be able to access that uh, that email or have a translation tool to help them. And then we sent a translate a Spanish um, version of the email to all of our Spanish speaking patrons. Um, and then we also posted uh, promo materials to all of our socials in both English and Spanish. So this is um, 
this is what the email looked like. They just uh, friendly, welcoming, just quick blurb. Um, and they could join, they could go ahead and click the click here to join and um, register directly to the Zoom club. And then these were the social media images that were posted. Okay, and with that promotion, um, we have had way more uh, interest than we thought that we would, which is awesome. Um, so we've already had, and I made this PowerPoint two days ago, at that time we'd had 87 people signed up. We could have more since then. Um, and the other thing, because we sent it to all of our English speakers, all of our patrons, um, we got a number of emails from native English speakers who were actually interested in volunteering, um, which is great because as you can imagine, 87 people is not gonna work for a conversation club. No one's gonna be able to get a word in. So we're, um, I spoke with Lee and we're thinking to reformat the club where everyone comes together there's an introduction, they watch the media or listen to the media together, and then it moves into smaller breakout rooms with, um, with small groups that can talk together. And in each club, there will be, Lee will facilitate a breakout room, Perla will facilitate one, and those native English speakers that reached out without us soliciting and were just interested in volunteering, they can each have um, a breakout room that they help out with as well. Um, and Lee also, since that's the format we'll be doing, Lee reached out to our people who were previously reading buddies, um, which Eric was uh, a time ago. And um, a lot of those uh, are awesome reading buddies have throughout the pandemic, since we haven't brought reading buddies back, they've been reaching out, looking for opportunities to volunteer, asking when reading buddies is coming out. And a bunch of them said, yeah, we would love to do this. So there will be lots of really awesome volunteers helping make this program happen. Um, that's the information, and I'm wondering if you have any comments or questions. Thank you, Jill. We will open up to any trustee questions and then the public comment. Hey, Jill, thanks for that. Uh, just quick question. I may have missed this. Um, is this kind of a, a pilot test bed and then looking to see what you might do going forward? Or is there a long, um, some kind of a short, medium, long-term plan with this? Yeah, I mean, I think this is the plan that we came up with. And of course, we'll iterate based on what works or doesn't work for us. Um, we do have plans to continue it, I believe at least through May um, and then we can reassess whether it's something that's working or if we need to change things. And um, uh, before, we will likely take a break during the summer. Gotcha, thanks. We'd love to see how it's turning out. Yeah. Adriana, you had a question? Hi, Jill. Um, I, I really like this program. And uh, as a language uh, lover, I have learned multiple languages through this way, through conversations with others. and exchanging um, one and uh, the first one language and the other. So um, huge proponent of this. I, I'm wondering, so you mentioned you used your, your social media. Uh, I'm, I'm not in social media. In fact, a lot of this is personal uh, dislike for some of the social media uh, policies and philosophy and, uh, and what we read in the news every day. But um, I was wondering whether you had enough, um, you know, success with the social media that you used, whether um, I'm thinking of next door since it's such a more local and much better curated media, it doesn't have all the, um, you know, attention sinkholes that the other ones tend to have. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I'm wondering if that could be an option. Um, also, if there's anything we can do to help, <clears throat> uh, you know, attract both participants and volunteers, although it seems like volunteers, you have um, a good yeah. option, but Thank you, Adriana, um, and I hear your concern <laughs> about social media, that's valid. Um, so to be honest, we, we get a little bit of um, promo through social media, particularly like through the Pickleweed social media, we have a pretty, or the so Pickleweed Facebook page, we have a pretty active um, group of people. Um, it's all in Spanish and we, we have people that message us and ask questions, but I, if I had to guess like, the probably 
95% of the interest that we got was through our Orange Boy email campaign because through this platform that we got um, about a year ago, we can actually send emails to every single patron that has a library card. And so um, I was able to send it to, to all patrons. If you guys have library cards, you probably got the email. Um, and then we were able to send a targeted one to all patrons that have Spanish as their preferred language on their library card, um, a, a translated version. So I'm guessing that's where the vast majority of our interest came from. And at this point in time, we sent out another promo email where we were promoting um, just all of the services that we have coming up. And I spoke with Lee and she didn't feel like she needed an extra boost. Like 87 people is more than enough people for her to, to, to handle right now. Um, I think she has, I think she has the, with like the volunteers that she has, it'll, it'll make it work. And then she'll let me know if she needs an additional boost in the future. Great. Well, uh, great job. Yeah, I do. I do get the emails. I love it. I've signed up to a few of the programs. So uh, I think, yeah, that's, that's a great way to ensure people, people see their email versus social media. Maybe they're not in all the platforms and yeah, and I think, I mean, if you're asking what you can do, you can certainly forward it to different people. If you wanted to post on Nextdoor, that's awesome. Um, we have, we can, we can handle some more people, but I don't think uh, we're looking to get, you know, double the amount that we already have. That might be a bit of a bear for the, for Lee and Perla to facilitate. Yeah, especially as a first. Uh, mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, reopening of this, but yeah, sounds great. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions or comments? I was just wondering, um, the previous similar program that you had done in 2018, 2019, did you have any sense of like why like that died or people lost interest? Like, I mean, I just wondered if you had any, if you got any feedback or had any idea why that one didn't work as you well. Know, I wasn't, um... I had nothing to do with Intercombio. That was my predecessor, Josh, that was um, working on that program. Henry has his hand raised, so perhaps he can speak to that. Uh, initially, it was uh, it was successful for about a year. It was mm -hmm. very volunteer driven by a group of volunteers, and they sort of moved it to the wellness center. I recall it was initially, I think, at, at the the Bigelweed Library. I recall maybe they start they kept it going by themselves, but but I think that or or the volunteers who who were central maybe moved on to something else. But it, it was very effective for about a year, I, I recall. I don't have any more specific detail though I could get back to you. Okay. No, I was just curious because you know, if you had some thoughts or had some things to watch out for, or you know, just was it if this is Zoom and that was in person, you know, just, you know, wanted to just see um, if you had any sort of starting points so that you can sort of steer this one to help it, you know, continue to be successful. So just, just curious, but I think it's great that you're, you know, doing something like this again. I, I love languages too. I can't speak more than one, but I've always wanted to. And I think programs like this are awesome. So I'm Thank glad you. to see you're doing it. Yeah. And I would say that um, I know that Joshua had said that one challenge was the the pairing of the Spanish and the English speaker, whereas this one, it's just it's all in English for anybody who's a, a ling, an English language learner. I found the email of the end of Intercambio, and I can forward it to Cheryl and and everyone else if they're interested. That speaks also of of transitioning it to um, being an Intercambio. That's that's that works with um, Elm enriching lives through music, so mm -hmm. so um, it pretty much verifies what I said generally, um, but but I'll send it maybe to all the board for for their um, you know information BCCT. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. I know that part of the. Uh, interest is in the topic being discussed and the usefulness, right? Maybe they want to communicate with school staff or with, uh, you know, government officials and, mm -hmm. uh, or they want to be able to, you know, read a book and it, it just depends on what their uh, motivation, right? It, it is to learn the language and what they want to practice. So 
I think that the um, the thought behind having it move with Elm was that there was you know a number of parents who were Spanish speakers who while their kids were participating in Elm they could participate in Intercombio. Right. Any other questions from the board? No. Jamie has left, so the new acting chair or the new yeah. chair now and open it up for public comment. For public Sarah. comment. So, Ginger, could you open public comment, please? Yes. If you wish to provide public comment and are watching this meeting through Zoom, please use the raise, raise hand function to let us know you would like to speak. If you are participating by telephone and wish to provide public comment, please press star nine. When it is your turn to speak, you will be notified that the host is inviting you to participate. You will need to press star six to unmute yourself. Once you're unmuted, you'll have three minutes to provide your comments. Uh, there are attendees right now in Zoom. Let's see if anybody's interested in providing comments. I don't see any hands. Okay, so no public comments. No need to respond to those questions. Uh, do I need to call on board members internally alphabetically to offer comments? We've been yeah. kind of skipping that unless yeah, there's a lively discussion, I think, but uh, okay. yeah. Okay, so we can move on to item three. All the comments from the audience regarding items not listed on the agenda. All uh, right. Andrew, could you open for public comment? Sure. Okay, let's see. If you wish to provide public comment and are watching this meeting through Zoom, please use the raise hand function to let us know you would like to speak. If you are participating by telephone, I wish to provide public comment. Please press star nine. When it is your turn to speak, you will be notified that the host is inviting you to participate. You will need to press star six to unmute yourself. Once you're unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. Okay, we do have somebody who's interested. I'm going to allow them to speak. Good evening, everybody. My name is Sunny Lee. Um, I just uh, uh, mentioned because I knew that uh, uh, this meeting is happening every month. And uh, early this month, a friend of mine and I'm talking, oh yeah, we should attend the meeting and learn about uh, what's going on in the library. Uh, we are uh, um, dedicated patrons of uh, our lovely <laughs> uh, library. and. Uh, I couldn't find the event of this public meeting under the San Rafael event page. So I wrote down the search, like in the search section, a board of a trustee. That's what a library board of trustee, or I put library, but I couldn't find. And eventually I old link somewhere, uh, email that I saved that about the uh, uh, board of uh, board of trustee uh, sections of library board of trustee uh, section, and I go below that page, and there was agenda item. Then I could click the agenda item. Then I could click the Zoom link. So it was uh, like 15, 20 minutes of struggling uh, to finding the link. So it's a kind of a, personally. I'm struggling, so many things struggling in my life. So if we make it simpler for me to find the link, it will have many people's life so much easier. Thank you. So normally we don't respond, but I'd like to just um, uh, respond in this way because it's a recorded meeting. I would search public meetings. All the public meetings that the city has to offer will come up. It will include the city council meeting, planning commission, any other boards and commission meetings, as well as the agenda and or agenda packet. So hopefully that will be helpful. Thank you, Susan. You're welcome. So closing uh, public comment, unless yes, there's- Yes, I, I don't see any other hands up. Okay, so let's move on to item four, fiscal year 2021, 2022, first quarter annual revenue and expenditure budget report. Henry. Thank you, Adriana. Uh, I will be giving the presentation. Um, 
I, I will be um, sharing my screen with a slideshow where I'll, I'll go over the first quarter uh, budget with you. And that at, at the conclusion of that, I'll bring up the budget document for, for referral during the discussion and or then I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, so here we go. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Thank you. So this is a review of fiscal year 21-22's first quarter. Uh, we're, we're on a fiscal year that starts in on July 1st and runs through June 30th. So this is July, August, September. Um, you know, quarter, quarterly, we review these uh, uh, expenditure reports as they are finalized, which is usually about a month or two after the close of the fiscal year when, when it, uh, the, the, all the sort of budget items have been processed by finance, et cetera. Um, as of this report, you know, a, 25% of the fiscal year has elapsed, i.e. it's the first quarter. Um, th our budget is, is, uh, has two parts. It's, it's, uh, it's composed of the general fund and the parcel tax. The overall activity is 28% expended, which is a combination of the expenditures from both parts. The general fund is ahead of the 25% one might expect for the first quarter, and it's at 31%, and the parcel tax is behind at 20% for a total expenditure percentage of 28%. And those of you that have been on the board a little while may remember that the general fund expenditure is always significantly higher in the first quarter, second quarter, as we move through the year because our huge payment to our consortia is paid in full at the beginning of the year. Without that, that piece, the expenditure would be pretty much right on target at 25%. And then the parcel tax is, is, is lagging behind an ideal 25% due to staff vacancies. If you'll recall in the previous year, we had three frozen positions and and um, I think almost six unfilled positions, and we're still um, hiring furiously to get people in all those positions, doing a great job. But that's why that first quarter is a little behind. The parcel tax uh, largely funds operations, which a huge amount of it, most of it, is for staff a salaries and benefits. Um, revenue highlights, the general fund provides us about 71% of operating expenses. That's slightly over 3 million. Parcel tax, 28%, um, slightly over 1 million. And friends of the library, about 1%. Uh, the general fund revenue is low we, we don't really bring a lot of revenue in in the general fund per se, and it used to be mostly fines and we eliminated fines. Uh, now it's pretty much a small amount of replacement fees and some money that we're granted from our local state library consortium. And it's estimated to be about 12,000 this year. Friends of the library estimated expected contribution will be about 28,000. And then as far as revenue, the parcel tax is our biggest piece of revenue in the parcel tax budget. And that is expected to be uh, $1,114,028. Uh, just uh, understand that, that that is always decreasing slightly by people who are taking the exemption. If you're over 65 and live in your own home, you can seek an exemption from this bill of about $59. And then every year there's a possibility for it to increase by the cost of living increase with a cap of 3%. And it's, it increased this past year slightly, 
by that amount. So those two factors, one towards the cost of living increase and then the, the, um, the exemptions are sort of taking away from it on going through the nine year life of this measure. So uh, here I'm, I'm gonna get more specific now. Um, and uh, expenditure highlights for the general fund. Uh, regular higher salaries and benefits are slightly higher. Um, they were at 26, which, which caused us a little bit of concern because, because this is our biggest budget item. So if it's over by a small amount, it could be problematic. But we were ex it was explained to us that that has to do with the furlough reimbursement beginning of 21-22. Um, the city um, became um, re reimbursed employees for um, when they got rid of the furlough that we instituted during COVID. Everyone took a 5% pay cut. So, so employees received lump sums for those amounts and that, that kind of fit into the salaries and benefits more than would have been expected, but isn't a problem over the entire year. Uh, our temporary employees expenditures are unspent in general fund because we're taking that out of parcel tax right now. So we'll be flipping back to taking that out of general fund as, you, you know, depending upon the, the way the budget is looking, we, we often tend to spend general fund before parcel tax uh, recently, but our, our approach in a, in a longer term um, look at our budget has been to spend parcel tax first. And th depending on whether we we're looking to save money or, get, or spend money, if we don't spend parcel tax, then we can spend it the next year, but general fund has to be expended during that the year or it goes away. Um, again, building maintenance contracts and maintenance improvement are higher due to annual contract payments for things like HVAC and maintenance of, of various systems that, that, that hit us uh, usually in the beginning of the fis fiscal year. And then because we've been closed, gas and electric has been lower than expected. Uh, the contract services line, as I stated, was overspent because this huge amount of over, I think it's 275-ish, um, is spent, is, is expended right at this first quarter. Um, Internal service charges are on target. Office supplies, books, and digital branch expenditures are, are similar to um, the other fund line I talked about. We're, we're spending out of the, um, wait, office, we're spending out of the parcel tax for this instead of general fund right now in order to, um, you know, really kind of, you know, uh, follow the the sort of uneven dictates of finance depending upon what the city's budget outlook looks like and i know that's i'll, I'll talk more about that uh, at the end uh, periodicals are unspent because um, we got rid of them during covid because there was no one in the library we're still catching up and um audio visual materials are underspent but we're going to be spending that um, throughout the rest of the fiscal year because there's also been a delay after ordering and spending. And we're still playing some catch up from the time that we were closed. Um, travel and conference um, and training instruction are underspent as there's been fewer in-person conferences and many free and reduced training. So we've been husbanding those resources and the same with professional dues and subscriptions. We've tried to limit expenditures for a very, some of our professional organizations um, dues are pretty high. So unless like there's a few of our staff that are on awards committees or, um, or, or maybe attending the conferences, we wait until that happens to pay those dues. Um, and then uh, credit card fees, sorry. Um, we're not budgeted during COVID because we we weren't really doing in-person services and not taking in-person payments as those payments were all um, so, sort of, um, there, was a, there was a waiver of all fines and fees during COVID. We're starting to, to take payments, 
but most people are paying online and that's what we're trying to encourage. And we, and we are actually charged a fee when we take fees in the library through our traditional credit card machine. So that's only about $120 over the, the fiscal year. So, so that may actually go away altogether if we were able to um, push people more towards paying on um, even one of the computers within the library rather than the traditional credit card machine, which we have to pay a fee for. Uh, okay. Um, parcel tax, uh, county administrative fee, we have to pay the county to, to, to kind of um, collect the parcel tax. And we don't pay that until uh, the mid to end of the year. Uh, contract services are in the parcel tax fund generally, but in this, in this particular year and in, as the same as last year, as instructed by finance, the contract services line is gonna be used to pay the remainder of the new library conceptual design project using the measure C parcel tax set aside funds, which uh, finance will transfer as, they, as we need them. There's only a small portion of the $79,000 for this project remaining to be spent this fiscal year as the project pretty much concluded right at the end of the previous fiscal year. We've been um, underspent in programming because we don't really do a lot of in-person programming. Um, the, the virtual programming is much less expensive and arguably much more effective in some ways, but you kind of lose that in-person feeling. So we are planning to reintroduce in-person programming probably sometime in the next calendar year. Um, and books, we're, we're, we're lagging behind the 25% target for book expenditures. But, but we're ordering constantly and receiving constantly and expect to spend all those funds by the end of the year. Again, periodicals are unspent and, and have been ordered and will be invoiced in the second quarter as we're you know, re, restocking our periodical shelves. We have about 10 periodicals on the shelves so far and we're planning many more and it's something people really enjoy about visiting the library. Um, digital branch resources, uh, expenditures, it should say underspent. We're, we're, we're also catching up on those. Um, we've used a conservative approach to technology supplies and materials and, and, and uh, that's slightly underspent, but we're really vamping up our 3D printing program and we expect to fully expand those by the end of the year. And uh, training and instruction, it is we're also um, being very conservative with those expenditures, but we're we're looking at more systemic ways to do training. So we actually um, subscribe to a module called the Librarian's Guide to the Homelessness, which allows staff to participate in asynchronous trainings throughout the year. It's been very effective because as we reopen, we're having a lot more sort of um, interpersonal and behavior issues in the library, which this training is targeted at, at helping staff meet and respond to the challenges around people experiencing homelessness in the library and what that can represent and bring to the staff. So uh, that's the end of my slideshow. I'm gonna stop sharing. And, th and then I'll bring up the spreadsheet as appropriate. The spreadsheet's a little confusing, I know, but. Um... Um, I just had a general question. So I understand um, why some of the things are front loaded and I see that there are several categories underspent, but you expect to spend by the end of the year. So with all that, I'm just wondering, are there any particular areas of concern where you think there's a danger of going over budget? And if there are any, do you have any areas you feel you'll be able to ultimately balance them against? I just kind of want to get a sense of if you had any concerns of how the year's going so far that way. Uh, thank you for that question. No, we don't have any concerns that will go over. Um, I, I, 
we we have a pretty tight control on on the spending that's within our control, which is all non personnel expenditures. The personnel expenditures being much huger, we're often at 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 the kind of will of like like benefit costs increasing or or uh, you know things that that really are out of our control. And I haven't heard or been advised by finance of anything regarding that. We had a great meeting. There were no real red flags or things that we should be overly concerned about. I think ongoing uh, the 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 fact that the Marinette fees are so large is something that we haven't really come up with a, a, a solid way of uh, kind of changing, but but I'm still working on that. You know, in terms of I think the best best possibility is changing the way the fees are divided, that the, the the pricing structure among the consortium could be slightly tweaked to favor us in a way that it doesn't right now and would actually reflect more of you know what services are made available to what libraries in the consortium. But other than that, no 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 red flags and and nothing that we should be concerned about. And you don't see this year, I mean, now that we're, you know, this year it's getting busier. I know last year during COVID, there were a lot of categories that just stayed underspent throughout the rest of the year. But do you have any expectation that you're still going to come up a little bit short that way in terms of, you know, not spending or not, you know, providing some of the things that you had hoped to? Yeah, not, no. I mean, I mean, all things being equal, we're bringing on a bunch more staff. Uh, our collection people are spending like crazy. Um, you know, as the year progresses, you know, uh, like organically, the entire system needs more money for eBooks. So, so if we, if it's possible to put more of our unspent money into that, I think we will. Um, the 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 way. Um, You, you know the, the the I think the key sort of nimbleness we have is is we we will will if if at all possible we have we have a great relationship with finance where if we don't spend measure D money that will save for next year but if we if we can spend general fund or instructed to do so we'll make use of that um, and I think that the the most significant piece for all of the staff is the collection budget, getting that spent. And in the previous year, because of uh, staffing shortages and that we were closed and, you know, just being able to really provide the in-person material kind of smorgasbord that we really have been used to. Um, the, 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 it's only a, if there was a huge supply chain problem for books the way there is, with with other technology, it, it might put a kink in it, but but we really are pretty flexible in terms of you know being able to kind of look at ebooks slightly more, or you know we, we try to order way in advance so that we stop towards the end of the year and and allow things to be received, and then and then at the end kind of do a little more ordering to to sort of level it out. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, I just had a question kind of specifically on the digital, digital branch resources. Um, if you could expand on like, what does that really entail? And I'm sorry if I missed it. And then why is that like so underspent? And does it cause maybe a, a, a dearth in services for, for uh, patrons? You're, you're muted. Yeah, let me bring up the spreadsheet just a sec. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so um, digital branch resources um, pretty much cover um, some of our databases that aren't um, shared resources from MarinNet. More than half of our databases are shared resources. So the fact that we haven't really spent as much on digital branch resources doesn't really reflect, um, you know, a, a sort of dearth of, of content. Um, 
we do we do spend that on on some of our um, resources that we don't share with MarinNet, like Hoopla, um, Canopy. Um, we've been very fortunate to be in a, a shared agreement with the county for Canopy, where where we actually um, every user can get the full um, number of plays, and it's even though it's a pay per use program. We are allowed. We are allowed um, the full plays for all of our twenty thousand some users without being dinged for each one, which is called the cap program, which is awesome. Um, we, we will be expending more of digital branch resources with for ebooks as as the bills come due, but it, but it I'd say it doesn't really reflect a lack of focus or a lack of support of our our um, you know our our digital resources, but sort of in addition to the lump of them that we receive through MarinNet, which includes our overdrive collection, um, our genealogy resources, our main research databases. And we also just got four new free databases from the state. So I would say conversely, we're kind of like, um, except for filling holds within overdrive, uh, we're kind of swimming in abundance in a way. And we're sort of in the top quarter of, of funding per capita of libraries in California. So, so um, we will spend this money, but yes, that's a great question. Thank, thank you. Thank you for uh, explaining, explaining that. Any other comments from trustees? Jinder, can you call for public comments? Yes, we do have attendees. If you wish to provide public comment and are watching the meeting through Zoom, please use the raise hand function to let us know you would like to speak. If you're participating by telephone or wish to provide public comment, please press star nine. When it is your turn to speak, you'll be notified that the host is inviting you to participate. You will need to press star six and unmute yourself. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. I'm just gonna see if anybody's interested. Yes, there is somebody interested, one second. Thank you again uh, for letting me speak. Uh, uh, just a quick question about the, uh, honey mentioning the four new uh, free state program that was provided recently that is not um, actually doesn't impact on the budget. That, I think that's what I heard. I'm just curious what those four new uh, digital uh, branch resources that Santa Fe is now providing. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jinro, can you close public comments? I guess I can do that. Um, any other questions from trustees? Otherwise we can move over, skip items five and six and move over to item seven. Other brief reports or any meetings, conferences and seminars attended by board members. I have one, I attended uh, Gardner's uh, Reimagine HR conference and the, it, given the context of it's so hard to find and retain talent uh, after the pandemic, the world has changed and expectations from employees have changed as well. And so uh, some really interesting data around retaining staff, which relates to any organization and um, around the perceptions of fairness to the different groups that now work in very different ways and how can we you know, think of uh, many different uh, groups. Uh, some might be parents, some might be remote workers, hybrid workers, and on-site workers, um, and the different you know, experiences they face and, and you know, just being uh, mindful that uh, employees wanna feel that they're treated fairly and that they're, they belong to their organization. So um, yeah, I was pleased to see some of, some of that reflected already in some of the practices, but that was uh, yeah, an interesting conference that I attended. Any other conferences anyone attended? Those 
In that case, we can move to item eight, other brief program updates or report on any meetings, conferences, and or seminars attended by staff. Uh, any comments by staff? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna run to the ABCD and then I, um, and so uh, Measure D Parcel Tax Committee let, met last week, looking at the fourth quarter of, of the previous fiscal year's budget. They'll be meeting again soon to uh, finalize a report to the city council that goes together with a staff report uh, that basically verifies that the Measure D budget has been spent in accordance with the, the law and the measure approved by the voters. Um, and that's for library operations. The previous measure had included building improvements, but this one is only for library operations. Um, also, we had we have one new member of the Measure D Parcel Tech. Oh, two, one member was re-upped for an additional term and one new member of the Parcel Tax Committee. So we, we were down two people back to five, going strong, and we'll finish out the year at, uh, I think, the first council meeting in December. Uh, the Friends of the Public of San Rafael Public Library meet tomorrow. I did miss last week's meeting, last um, month's meeting. Um, but they, the, the Friends have been, uh, had some great book sales recently. The rare and special book sale was had at the San Rafael Community Center and the previous book sale to that. And that means their bottom line is increased by the amount they used to use to rent the church across the street. So hooray to library and rec for providing the friends with a place, a great place with parking, tables, bathrooms, everything you could want to have an awesome set of book sales. And it's, and Susan's been right on the spot for that. And it's worked out wonderfully. <laughs> Um, the San Rafael Library Foundation, Public Library Foundation, uh, has postponed their November meeting, uh, uh, waiting upon events with, regarding the new library building projects, et cetera. Uh, MarinNet Board is meeting um, the next Thursday, uh, the, the last meeting. Um, we, we continue to be talking about our RFID tagging project, which we hired an outside contractor to come to town and hire people to put tags on all the books. And they'll be doing this in succession for all the libraries, except for Larkspur and Dominican. Um, and they'll, they're, they're set to be in our library in January. Um, so that should be exciting in our move towards um, a more modern way to handle books. RFID allows you to check out more books. Uh, as a patron, you can check out an entire stack. And um, when we handle the return of materials, it creates efficiencies in terms of checking in and, and we're looking towards automated materials handling like a conveyor belt at some point. We, we are one of the busiest locations in, in the consortium, um, probably, neck and neck with Mill Valley and Nevada. So um, the, the NorthNet board has not met recently and that's our state library consortium that we officially are members of in order to receive funding from the state. It's a consortium that goes from, uh, we're the southernmost county to the Oregon border and over to Nevada and down to about a little above Sacramento. Um, and maybe I'll turn it over to Susan for the new library building update. Hi everyone. I think it's probably the same thing that you heard last time. Um, we are hoping to have a meeting with the mayor and vice mayor. Unfortunately, the meetings that we've scheduled in the last few weeks have been rescheduled due to um, the mayor has prior commitments um, that got rescheduled as well as she had a death in the family. Um, so un for unfortunate reasons, we haven't been able to get together. We are trying to find a date before the end of the month. What that conversation is about is really getting their input as to 
moving forward with presenting the conceptual design of the combined library and community center at Albert Park to the council, but also getting their feedback on moving forward, doing a voter opinion poll of the community to find out if there is support for one of the two options, which would be the expansion and renovation of the existing Carnegie or a construction of a combined library and community center by the public. Um, and to measure that level of support for a ballot measure um, and what type of ballot measures that we're willing to consider. Um, so we're hoping that that meeting is going to happen shortly um, because that would definitely change um, the direction of the presentation, the presentation would go forward, staff's recommendation would be to go forward and with a voter opinion poll. If that is what is supported, the reason why we're pushing so hard is if that is supported, um, the city's consultant that normally coordinates these efforts is recommending that we start after the beginning of the new year, um, because we would need to get those results in time to move forward with a ballot measure in November of next year. So um, if once we have this meeting, if we get thumbs up, we're going to be putting on our running shoes and really running fast. Um, so really exciting. Um, so keep your fingers crossed. I'm really hoping that the next time we meet, we'll already have a decision and you'll know what that is. Um, but most likely the presentation of the conceptual design will be moving forward in a study session, kind of a workshop format before a council meeting and we are hoping again that we will be getting direction to move ahead with the voter opinion poll which would be great because obviously if you're going to the voters and asking them to what um, level would they financially support a ballot measure that will help indicate to them uh, the city council which path the community is willing to support whether it's the Carnegie or whether it is a combined library and community center. So happy to answer any questions, if you have any. Stay tuned, because this is a biggie, right? It's only taken us 20 years to get to this point. So hopefully, hopefully we're gonna hear a thumbs up and then we're gonna be running, because that's, I'm really excited. I gotta be honest, if we, we're allowed to go to the voters and ask them what they think, that's all we've been wanting to do is finding out what the community is willing to support. And hopefully they say yes, and hopefully it's yes, and they're indicating which option they prefer, which will make everybody's lives a lot easier. Thank you for that update. Any questions from trustees? And Henry, do you wanna go through the rest of the items? Yeah, uh, I have the city librarians report, a uh, couple of exciting items uh, for those of you uh, we sent a copy of the Friday memo. Um, the library division uh, won employee of the quarter and team of the quarter for this quarter. Uh, Min Nguyen won, won employee of the quarter. He's a senior library assistant. He's been with us for over 30 years, been instrumental in uh, all things technology, specifically with the 3D printing. Um, uh, able to fix anything, um, uh, a gracious and uh, collaborative employee, and he well deserves employee of the quarter. And then our rental assistance team, uh, which includes, uh, J had include Jamie Poirier uh, and one of our new hires, um, Katie Port, as well as Audrey, um, forgot her last name. Um, who, who has been a, a temporary employee and Luz, um, who, who is also a temporary employee, they, they received the team of the quarter. Um, and, and that was in um, the Friday memo also. Uh, Luz Diaz and um, Audrey Barton, sorry. Uh, and so uh, the, the mayor and um, uh, city manager, as well as multiple other city staff members came to one of our morning stand-up meetings and everyone was very pleased and we feel very appreciated. Thank you, employee recognition team. Um, also, I, I sent um, the, the board just, you know, about a half an hour ago, a list of our all, all of our new employees. We sent out an all-employee 
email of detailing uh, the one, two, three, four, five, six new employees we've recently hired. Um, uh, Lee, Lee has been with us for a while, but she promoted to full-time librarian. She's bilingual and uh, worked at the Pickleweed branch and now she's at downtown. Um, Matthew uh, is a very talented senior library assistant who's been instrumental in the memory lab and in our outreach to people experiencing homelessness. Uh, Basha just promoted into librarian. She's bilingual in uh, Spanish and Polish. And she um, is, has been very um, instrumental in representing us to Marinette uh, on the digital services working group and helping us with statistics, social media, and onboarding our new databases from the state. Um, the two of the ones that are very exciting are we, we got LinkedIn Learning, which used to be lynda.com, back again from the state who's paying the bill for the next year. And we got another uh, resource called Learning Express, which you can learn all your, uh, all kind of, you can learn, take tests for um, like being uh, a nurse or a firefighter or uh, the of testing available in Learning Express. Uh, another new employee is Perla, who's a half-time library assistant. She's bilingual in English and Spanish. Uh, she recently, previously worked for the recreation, the Alboro uh, Recreation Center. And so we stole her from Rec. Sorry, Pearl has been awesome. And Cheryl is also bilingual. Uh, she had worked for uh, the East Los Angeles and Long Beach libraries. And she's uh, half time at the mall and at our Pickleweed location. And we recently um, hired, as I mentioned, Katie Port is our new supervising librarian replacing Jill Harris, who moved to Sacramento. Um, she's worked for Menlo Park, Peninsula Library System, and Santa Clara County Library. And we're awfully happy to have her on our leadership team. Um, so that concludes the librarians, city librarian update. I just wanted to draw your attention to uh, future agenda topics. And, and it came up, uh, I think informally, we were wondering, I think, Jamie communicated to me that she would be okay with, with going dark in December. So I'm, I would seek, seek uh, advice from Susan, but I don't see her on camera right now, how we would decide that, but not having that, I think I'll email everyone for, for a straw poll on that. Sound good? Unless anyone has any any uh, things that are, are burning issues that we should discuss before the end of the fiscal year, but uh, uh, there's nothing I can think of. So I'll turn it back to the chair. I don't see anything on the script. So I think this concludes our meeting for today. Unless there's any other comments or questions. Oh, uh, two participants raised hands. Ginger, can you open for public comment, please? Um, are, are, can we do that, Henry, since uh, public comment has ended? Uh, I don't know if there's public comment on the staff reports and comments. Do you know, Susan? No, okay, public comment's over. Sorry. Uh, we did have multiple times for public comment, um, so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had an item just for public comment on items not on the agenda, so uh, that's okay. So thank you, everyone. Can we conclude the meeting today? Right, seven nineteen. Conclude the meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a thank great you. Evening. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you.